Hello, and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. On one of my 6502 assembly language programming videos, I got a great question. A viewer asked, when you load a binary program on the Apple II, how do you know what address it's loaded at? The more I thought about this question, the more interesting it became. It's of very little practical import, but it provides an interesting window into small systems design. DOS files on the Apple II come in four types, binaries written in assembly language, two flavors of basic files, and text files. You interact with binary files by using the commands bload, brun, and bsave. When you brun a program, DOS 3.3 will load the file and immediately jump to the beginning of memory. For example, you may remember when we wrote this latter program, we specified that it should be located at memory location hex 2000. Let's bload it and go into the machine language monitor and disassemble at memory location hex 2000. And we can see that this program is where we expect and we can even run it. Great, but how did DOS know to load this program at memory location hex 2000? Well, to answer this question, I referred to what many consider the Bible of Apple II DOS, a book called Beneath Apple DOS. What we learned from this is that for all binary files, the first two bytes of any binary file indicate the address it will be loaded to. The next two bytes indicate the length, and then the rest of the file is the actual data. So the location and length metadata is literally just part of the file format. This is one of the weaknesses of DOS 3.3 compared to the later and more sophisticated ProDOS. However, knowing this doesn't actually make it easy for us as users to answer the question in practice. You can't uh, look at the binary data in a file very easily on the Apple II, at least not without additional tools. However, some helpful folks on the Apple II Infinitum Slack pointed out that we can actually check a memory location to get an answer. They are AA72 and AA73. So if we load this binary and hop into the monitor, we can inspect those memory locations to find the location. The bytes are swapped because of how the Apple II stores memory. Let's load a different binary program. Uh, let's do the game NORAD, and then let's see how this works in practice. We'll go in here, we'll look once more at these memory locations, and we could see now they've changed to indicate memory location 800 hex. We don't even need to go into the machine language monitor to do this. From basic, we can peek a couple of memory locations. These are the same memory locations we were just looking at, uh, but the numbers are now in decimal rather than in hexadecimal, and so is the result. We see that this is in memory location 2048 decimal, which is indeed the same as 800 in hex. So we could hop back into the monitor and jump to that location, or we can even just call it from basic. So that's how we find out the address at which the Apple II loads binary files, at least in DOS 3.3. I have uh, been using the Apple for years and I never knew this little tip. So I'm glad to know. AA72 and AA73 are the location or the start location of the last file be loaded. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching. I'm going to play this game now.